My name's Julie. I was the first kid mom had back when she was still figuring out her life. She married young, straight out of high school, to my dad, Thomas. They were all about love and less about money, which didn't seem to work for her long. I was still toddling around when she met Richard, a guy with a wallet as thick as a brick and a fancy car to boot. She left Dad, took me, and never looked back, except to collect the alimony checks. Richard seemed all right at first, always bringing me little treats and letting me play in his big office filled with shiny things. But Mom, she was different around him. She always had this look on her face when she saw me, like I was a reminder of a life she wanted to forget. One evening, I remember hearing them talk in the kitchen while I was supposed to be watching TV. She's too much like Tom, Mom said, her voice sharp, always asking questions, always looking at me like he used to. I didn't understand then, but it stung hearing her talk like I was a problem. I loved my real dad. Sure, he lived in a small apartment across the city, but every moment with him was a blast, even if we were just kicking a ball around in the park or eating cheap pizza. Mom's words that night stayed with me, and the way she'd say things only got sharper. Can't you do anything right was a favorite of hers whenever I tried to help around the house or did my schoolwork in the living room. My dad, though, was different. You're doing great, July, he'd tell me every time I showed him my grades or a drawing from school. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Life at Mom and Richard's got more strained when I started school. Mom was always on about appearances, how I needed to wear the right clothes and hang out with the right kids. Why can't you dress like Clara's daughter? Look at her, Mom would nag, holding up one of my classmates' pictures from a party I wasn't invited to. One day, after a particularly rough scolding about my muddy shoes in the hall, I snapped back. At least Dad doesn't yell about a bit of dirt. The slap came quickly, her hand stinging my cheek before I even saw it move. Don't you talk about your father like that, she hissed, her face close to mine, her breath smelling of coffee and anger. Tears welled up, but I bit them back, tough like Dad taught me. That night, lying in my bed, I promised myself I wouldn't let her see me cry and wouldn't give her the satisfaction. When Mom announced she was pregnant again, the house took on a weird vibe, like everything was suddenly about to change, but not necessarily for the better. She had this glow people talk about, but it never seemed to shine my way. I'm having a baby with the man I love, Richard. It's going to be perfect, Mom said one evening, rubbing her belly as Richard beamed, like he'd won some kind of prize. Richard, ever the charmer, chimed in, we'll need to redo the guest room, make it fit for a little princess. My heart sank a bit. That was my room they were talking about, my little corner in their world. What about my room? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. Mom shot me a look, her smile tightening. You can move into the smaller room, Julie, it's only fair. The baby will need space. Fair. The way she said it made it sound like a done deal, no room for arguing. So I moved, packed up my stuff, and relocated to the smallest room in the house, barely bigger than a closet. The months flew by and soon Lily was born. She was all anyone could talk about. Isn't she just the most beautiful baby you've ever seen? Mom would gush to her friends over the phone, crabbling Lily like she was made of the most precious porcelain. Yeah, she's cute, I'd mutter, trying to make myself part of the conversation. Cute was an understatement. Lily was adorable, and I couldn't help but love her at first sight. I wanted to be a good big sister, wanted to be involved and help out. One afternoon, I tried to sneak into Lily's room while Mom was busy in the kitchen. I tiptoed in, peering over the crib at my baby sister, who was gurgling happily. Hey there, Lily, I whispered, reaching for a finger to let her grab it. Mom must have heard me because she was suddenly there at the door, her voice sharp as a knife. What are you doing, Julie? I told you, you need to ask before you go into her room. I just wanted to see her, I protested, feeling the familiar sting of tears pricking my eyes. I wanted to help. Dad was different. 
During one of my weekends with him, I opened up while we were having pizza at our favorite spot. Mom's always on edge with me around Lily. It's like she thinks I'll break her or something. Dad chewed thoughtfully then said, You know, Julie, some folks just have a hard time sharing love. It's like they think there's only so much to go around. But listen, you've got a whole lot of heart. Don't let your mom's ways make you think otherwise. His words helped a bit, but back at mom's, the distance between us grew. Even when I tried to share stories about school or friends, mom's attention was always split, always half listening, half watching Lily. One day I came home with a school award, second place in the science fair. I was buzzing, clutching the certificate like it was a ticket to their approval. Look, mom, I won this. I exclaimed, holding it out to her as she fed Lily. That's nice, dear, she said without looking up. Put it in the fridge or something. Or something, I echoed to myself, the words hollow. I stuck the certificate on the fridge, a bit crooked, and stood back. It was just another piece of paper to them, just another day in the shadow of Lily. Things were pretty rocky at home by the time I hit high school. Between Mom's cold shoulders and Richard's indifference, I felt more like a guest than a family member. It was around then that the bomb dropped. Mom decided it was time for me to go live with Dad permanently. The day she told me, we were having dinner. It was one of those rare moments where it was just her and me at the table. Richard was late from work, and Lily was already tucked in. Julie, we need to talk about your future, Mom started pushing her food around her plate with a fork. There was no warmth in her voice, just a cold, business-like tone that immediately put me on edge. What about it? I asked, trying to sound casual, but my heart was racing. We've been discussing things, and we think it's best if you move in with your father. With the new baby coming, things here are, well, they're complicated. I almost choked on my water, moving with Dad. But why? I thought everything was fine here. Mom sighed, a sound that seemed to carry all her impatience. Look, Julie, you're not a child anymore. You need a space of your own, and we can't provide that here, not with a new situation. It's cramped, and frankly, the financial burden is more than we expected. It's better for everyone this way. I pushed my plate away, no longer hungry. And what about school, my friends? You can go to a new school, make new friends, she said, as if it were that simple, as if I could just erase my life and start over with no problem. The next few weeks were a blur. I packed up my things, my world shrinking into boxes, books, clothes, the few keepsakes that meant something to me. Richard barely said goodbye and Lily, too young to understand, gave me a confused hug. Moving day was tough. Dad lived on the other side of town in a modest apartment. It was clean but cluttered with memories of a life paused since Mom left him. He was standing there waiting for me with open arms and a worried smile when I arrived. The apartment was nothing like the house I'd grown up in. My new room was half the size of my old one, with walls that needed paint and a window that looked out at a brick wall. But it was quiet, and Dad was trying. The first day at the new school was brutal. As I walked down the crowded hallways, I could feel the stares, hear the whispers. That's the new girl, they'd say, as if I were some kind of oddity. In class, I kept to myself, doubling in my notebook, trying to block out the murmurs. When the bell rang, I was the first out the door, not wanting to linger. At home, Dad noticed my mood. How was school? He asked, trying to keep his tone light. It was fine, I lied, shrugging off my coat and dumping my bag by the door. If it gets tough, you tell me, okay? We're in this together. You're not alone, July. His words meant a lot, but the loneliness I felt was deep, gnawing. It wasn't just about missing my old friends or the big house. It was about feeling unwanted, pushed out because I was too much of a burden. Adjusting to life at Dad's wasn't easy, but I figured out pretty quickly that if I didn't pull myself together, things would just get worse. I woke up one morning, looked around my cramped room, and decided it was time to take charge of my life. No one else is going to do it for me, 
I muttered under my breath. Dad noticed the change in me almost immediately. Over breakfast one day, he looked up from his coffee and said, You are looking more determined these days, Julie. What's on your mind? I stirred my cereal around, thinking about how to word it. I want to make something of myself, Dad. I don't want to end up stuck, you know. He nodded, a serious look crossing his face. I hear you, kiddo. So what's the plan? That scholarship, the big one for the top students. I'm going to get it, I declared, more to convince myself than him. Dad's smile was all the encouragement I needed. If anyone can get it, it's you. Just tell me what you need from me. School was tough, with long hours spent catching up and even longer evenings buried in books. My teachers noticed the shift. Even the tough ones seemed to respect the grind. Mr. Jensen, my math teacher, kept me after class one day. Julie, your work has improved dramatically. What's the interest? I need that scholarship, I replied bluntly, packing up my stuff. I've got plans and they don't include being stuck here forever. Mr. Jensen studied me for a moment, then nodded slowly. Well, keep at it and let me know if you need extra help. I'm here. Making friends wasn't easy, but I managed to find a few people who didn't seem to mind that I wasn't all fun and games. During lunch, I'd sit with Maria and Luke, two kids who weren't exactly at the top of the social ladder, but knew how to laugh. So, Julie, you're like a library ninja now, huh? Luke joked one day, nudging me as we sat down with our trays. I cracked a smile. Yeah, I've got to be stealthy if I want to snag the best study spots. Maria chimed in, her voice soft but sincere. It's cool what you're doing, Julie. Most wouldn't bother. The days rolled into months, and the pressure mounted as application deadlines drew near. Dad was my rock, always there with a hot meal and a listening ear whenever the stress got too much. The day I got the scholarship letter, my hands were shaking as I tore it open. Dad was right there, holding his breath. I scanned the words, my heart pounding in my chest, and then I whooped so loud I swear the neighbors heard. I got it, Dad. I got it. I jumped up, the letter flapping in my hand like a flag of victory. Dad swept me up in a big hug, laughing and cheering right along with me. I knew it. I knew you could do it. As I packed up my things for college a few months later, I felt ready. The future was bright, and for the first time it felt like it was truly mine. I was leaving, but I was taking all these lessons, all this love and hard-earned wisdom with me. After graduating with honors and establishing a solid career, I felt like I was finally on stable ground. I was 28, doing well professionally, and had just started seeing a wonderful guy from work, Jack, who had been nothing but supportive. Then, out of nowhere, my mom called. We hadn't spoken much since I moved out, but suddenly here she was, back with a request, or more like a demand. Julie, your sister Lily is going to college in your city. We've paid her tuition and we think it'd be best if she stayed with you, Mom said, her tone making it clear this wasn't just a suggestion. I hesitated, memories of our strained relationship flashing through my mind, but I wanted to believe things could be different. Okay, Mom, I'll help Lily out. It might be nice to reconnect, I responded, trying to keep any skepticism out of my voice. Lily moved in a week later, and right off the bat, it was clear we were worlds apart. She was as stunning as ever, obsessed with her appearance and the kind of lifestyle that screamed high maintenance. She brought with her a suitcase full of expectations and a personality that demanded they be met. Can you make sure we have almond milk and kale? I'm on a special diet, Lily mentioned casually on her first evening, examining her reflection in the mirror. Sure, I'll add them to the grocery list, I replied, trying to accommodate her, but living with Lily was more challenging than I'd anticipated. She partied like there was no tomorrow, often stumbling in at dawn, her carefree laughter echoing through the apartment while I lay awake, anxious about meetings and presentations. One afternoon, Jack came over as Lily was prepping for another night out. I noticed how she smiled at him, 
a little too sweetly, a little too long. Jack waited until she left to speak up. Julie, I think Lily's got the wrong idea about me. She's been, well, flirty. I felt a flush of anger and embarrassment. Thanks for telling me, Jack. I'll talk to her. When I confronted Lily, her response was a dismissive laugh. Oh, come on, Julie, I'm just being friendly. Besides, can I help it if he likes me back? That's my fiancé, Lily. You need to respect that. I shot back, my voice firm. Her laugh chilled me. Julie, I'm used to getting what I want. Always have been. That was the last straw. I couldn't live like this, feeling like I had to guard my life from my own sister. You need to find another place to live, Lily. This isn't working out. I told her my decision final. Lily stormed out, slamming the door behind her. Within an hour, my phone rang. It was Mom, her voice cold and sharp. You're such an envious girl, Julie. Can't stand to see your sister happy, can you? I just want respect, Mom, that's all, I replied, but I might as well have been talking to a wall. After that, things went quiet with Lily. I heard through the grapevine she dropped out of college and was floating through her social circles on charm and whims. As for me, I refocused on my life with Jack, my work, and the peace of rebuilding my boundaries. Two years had flown by since I last tried to patch things up with my family. Things were going well for me. I was moving up at work, and life with Jack was better than ever. That's when I heard the news about Lily. She had dropped out of college and was getting married to some rich guy she'd met. Feeling a mix of curiosity and goodwill, I picked up the phone to call home and offer my congratulations. It was my mom who answered, her voice cold and distant as always. Mom, I heard about Lily's wedding. I just wanted to say congratulations. I started, trying to keep my tone light. Well, don't bother. We're not waiting for you at the wedding. It's for rich people only, and we don't need any beggars there, she spat out, her words cutting deep. I clenched the phone a little tighter, feeling the old sting of rejection. Really, Mom? That's how you're going to be. What did you expect, Julie? You've always been the difficult one. Just stay away, she said before hanging up. I stood there, phone in hand, the dial tone at cacoing in my ear. The herc was palpable, but I wasn't going to let it ruin me. I found out later that they'd spared no expense on Lily's wedding, hiring popular artists and actors to make it a lavish affair. Time passed, and life didn't stand still for me either. Jack proposed, and suddenly I was planning my own wedding. Nothing extravagant, but every bit filled with love and sincerity. I called Dad to share the news. He was overjoyed. Julie, that's wonderful. You bet I'll be there. Wouldn't miss it for the world, he said, his voice brimming with happiness. Encouraged by Dad's reaction, I made one last attempt to bridge the gap with my mom. I dialed her number, my heart racing as I waited for her to pick up. Mom, I'm getting married. I want you to come, I said, holding my breath. Her reply was as chilly as a winter breeze. No, Julie, not interested in attending some modest gathering of losers. Count me out. I swallowed hard, fighting back the hurt. All right, Mom. Take care, I said and hung up, knowing it was probably the last time I'd invite her into my life. Our wedding day was simple but beautiful. Dad walked me down the aisle, his presence a steady comfort. The room was filled with genuine smiles and heartfelt congratulations, a stark contrast to the grandeur and coldness of Lily's wedding spectacle. Our modest reception was filled with laughter, dancing, and stories. Jack and I mingled with friends and family who loved us for who we were, not for the money or status we brought. Life was moving along sweetly. Jack and I were thrilled to be expecting our first child. It was during this time, one ordinary afternoon, that my phone rang, and the voice on the other end turned my day upside down. It was Mom, and she was not calling with congratulations. Julie, you have to take us in. We're desperate. She blurted out without even a hello. Mom, what's going on? I asked, although part of me didn't want to know. It's all gone wrong. 
Richard's business tanked. We mortgaged the house for Lily's wedding, and now it's all just gone. And your sister's marriage is over. Her husband kicked her out, and he's demanding money for her cheating, she explained hurriedly, her voice edged with panic. I took a deep breath, trying to process the flood of information. Okay, slow down. What exactly are you asking of me? We need a place to stay, all of us. We're coming to your house, she stated matter-of-factly, as if it were the most obvious solution. The request, or rather the demand, hit me hard. No, Mom, you can't just decide to move in with us. It doesn't work like that. Julie, you owe us after everything we've done for you, she snapped, her voice sharp and commanding. That struck a nerve. Oh, you remember how you were when I needed you most? You pushed me out. You chose everything over me, and now you expect me to just open my doors. Her voice rose. You're being selfish, Julie. Where is your family spirit? I am your mother and you've never let me forget it, she retorted. But being a mother doesn't mean what you think it does. It's not about debts and demands. I shot back, my patience wearing thin. Her fury was palpable, even through the phone. You'll regret this, Julie. I might even take you to court, get what I deserve, she threatened. I couldn't help but laugh, though it was more from disbelief than amusement. Go ahead and try. Dad was my guardian when you kicked me out, remember? What are you going to claim? That your daughter wouldn't let you live off her after you threw her out. There was a pause, and I could almost hear her brain ticking over. This isn't over, Julie, she finally hissed before hanging up. Life after my last call with Mom felt like a fresh start, a true new beginning. Jack and I were busy getting the nursery ready, picking out paint colors and assembling cribs, all while navigating the usual ups and downs of pregnancy. It was a Sunday morning, bright and early, and I was setting up some baby clothes we just bought, folding them neatly into the new dresser. Jack was drilling something in the corner, the electric screwdriver buzzing away. He stopped, wiped his forehead, and looked over at me with a smile. How's it going over there, Julie? Need any help? I've got it, thanks. Just thinking about everything. It's really happening, huh? I responded, running my hand over a tiny, soft wing Z. It really is. We're going to be parents. Jack's voice was full of awe and a bit of nervous excitement. Just then, there was a knock at the door. I was surprised. Who could it be this early on a Sunday? Jack went to answer it while I continued organizing. I heard voices, and then Jack called out, Julie, it's for you. Walking into the living room, I was surprised to see my dad standing there, a big grin on his face and a teddy bear in hand. Surprise, he exclaimed. Dad, what are you doing here? I couldn't hide my delight, rushing over to give him a big hug. I wanted to come and see how my favorite daughter is doing, and I brought something for my future grandchild. He handed me the teddy bear, which was soft and cuddly. Thank you, Dad. It means the world to me that you're here, I said, feeling a bit emotional. We sat down, and Dad looked around at the half-assembled baby furniture and the stacks of baby books. Looks like you're almost ready for the little one. We're trying. It's a lot, but we're excited, I told him then paused, biting my lip. Dad, I had another call with Mom. It didn't go well. Dad's expression sobered. I heard about it from your mom. She wasn't too pleased, was she? No, she wasn't. But Dad, I stood my ground. I had to, for me, for Jack, for the baby. We need peace here, I said firmly. The day passed with us sharing stories, Dad giving us some unsolicited but amusing parenting advice and just enjoying being together. It was a good day, one of those days you know you'll look back on fondly. As the sun set, painting the sky in shades of orange and pink, Jack, Dad, and I sat on the porch, a gentle breeze rustling the leaves. Jack put his arm around me and I leaned into him. You know, despite everything with Mom and all the drama, I feel lucky we have each other. We're about to start this amazing new chapter, and I have a feeling it's going to be great, I said, 
looking out at the fading light. It will be. We've got this, July, Jack reassured me. As night fell and Dad said his goodbyes, I felt a profound sense of contentment and readiness for what was to come. The challenges with my mom and the uncertainty of new beginnings had been tough, but they'd led me here to this moment.